friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. Today, I will show how to make a simple sidebar type of menu for navigation without extensions. As I don't like relying on them too much as these extensions might become outdated and most importantly, you can't test them on iPhones. So let's begin. Go to project, start a new project. Let's call it sidebar. Keep the toolkit default, this is very important. Now, we already have a title bar coming here. I'm going to turn off this one by unchecking title visible and we will be making our own title bar with a button for opening up our navigation menu or sidebar, okay? So go to layouts and drag and drop a horizontal arrangement onto the viewer. Keep a line horizontal left. You can even make it right if you want the menu button, the navigation menu button to come on the right hand side, okay? But I'm going to keep it left and make the background color blue and make the height 10% and the width fill parent, okay? Now from user interface, drag and drop a list picker onto this horizontal arrangement. Now I want to put a nice menu icon image for this list picker button. So this is a nice image that I got from flaticon.com and I downloaded this image and make sure that you choose 64 by 64 pixels, okay? And just download it by pressing the free download button, okay? And I've already downloaded it, so I'm not gonna download it again. Go back to your project and upload the downloaded image in the media. So I have it here, hamburger.png. And now for the list picker in its properties, choose that image, okay? And remove the text from it because we don't need it anymore. And very important, change the pixel size, that is height and width to 55 pixels. Now we will be using the concept of virtual screens. I have already explained about them in my paint app with the color picker tutorial. Virtual screens mean more than one full screen layout on a screen such as the screen one, okay? And we show only one of them at one time. They're faster than adding separate screens. That is, we move from one screen to another faster when we are actually using the app. And it is also easier to pass data between the two screens as you're technically on the same screen, okay? So let's add three virtual screens. So from layout, drag and drop a vertical arrangement. And let's make it background color white and make the height fill parent and the width fill parent. Okay, and let's rename it to member screen. So I'm assuming that we have a library app where we want to add members, add books, search books. Okay, so there's a member screen. Okay, and let's add a label. Just so you know that this is the member screen when we're actually navigating the menu. So I am going to make it font bold, font size 20, and I'm going to write down add member screen. It's simple, okay? So whatever you want to add, all the components, text boxes, whatever, you will be adding it inside this member screen. So make sure that they are all inside the member screen. And just duplicate it by first of all selecting it and pressing Control C, Control V on the keyboard for Windows or Command C, Command V for Mac OS. And let's rename this one to Book Screen. And we are going to change the label, labels text accordingly to Add Book. Okay? And similarly, let's duplicate it again. And let's rename this one to search screen. Okay. And again, let's update the label that it is the search book screen. 
And as I said to you before that in virtual screens, only one screen layout is visible at one time. So I'm going to keep the member screen visible on, but for the book screen, I will turn it off. And the, for the search screen, I will turn it off too. And you can add as many layouts as you want, okay? Now let's go to the block section. And first of all, we are going to make a global variable for our menu items. And this will be an empty list. I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it. And this will be our screens list. And you will understand more why I'm making a list of screens too. This will be containing these vertical arrangements, the components. In screen one's initialize event, add three text blocks to your menu items list. So get the setter for it and then go to lists and get the make a list block. And we want three items here and then go to text, right click, duplicate, right click, duplicate. And let me write down the text here. This will be the text that will be coming in your actual menu. So add member, add book, search books, okay? And then we are going to assign this menu items list to our list pickers elements. So go to list picker and get its elements block, set elements block, and then hover over menu items to get the get block for it. Now we are going to put our components, our screens, our virtual screens inside the screens list too. So again, variables, set, screens, lists, make a list. And the list is now, now go to member screen, go down and get the component, right click, duplicate. And this is now the book screen. And we want another slot here. So click on the cog wheel to add another slot. And the third one is, again, we can duplicate because the same type of component. So this is the search screen. So we have added all three components. Now, whenever the user clicks on the list picker, our menu will open up with our three items, add member, add book, search box. When the user selects any of these items, the list pickers after picking event will be triggered, okay? And in this event, first of all, we are going to make all our screens invisible, okay? So this is a way of making sure that all the screens are invisible, they have been turned off, and then you just turn on the screen associated with the menu item, okay? This is why I made a list of the components. So for that, just go to control and get the for each item in list block. And here the list is our screens list. So hover over it and get it, okay? And here we are going to use this amazing any component blocks that select any vertical arrangement. And then we have this thing called set vertical arrangement dot visible of component. So we just have to pass it the component and tell it whether the vertical arrangement should be visible or not, okay? So I have used these any components in my snow globe tutorial. So this is a very cool feature of abstraction and we don't have to actually go and do it for all of them separately, we can do it by using this for loop and by just passing the component. So if, if I hover over the item, which is actually a component, so the first will be member screen, the second will be book screen and search screen, and I'm going to turn them off. So go to logic and false, okay? And now we just have to look at what the user has selected in the list picker and turn on that screen. So go to control, and get this if then else if block and put it outside the for loop. And here we are going to just do a comparison. Go to list picker and get this 
selection. So this is the item that has been selected by the user in the list picker and check whether it's equal to add members. So make sure that the spelling is the same. So it's better to just copy it from this menu items. Now, if it is equal to add member, turn on the add member screen. So if I click the member screen, so if I go to member screen, I just make it true, right click duplicate, plug that in, take that out, get the add book one, okay and here we have to turn on the book screen and our last we know that if it is not add member or add book then the user must have selected the search book option so we can just turn that one on so this simple but elegant solution for navigation is complete. I hope you like my easy version of sidebar without using extensions that you can even use on iPhones. Please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of the great projects that I've planned for you. Thank you for watching. Have a good day and goodbye.